Hey guys, we thought we'd give you something different, something fun, new and fresh. And I absolutely love small businesses here in the UK that not just do food, but you know, fishing, farming, you name it, it's exciting. This is School of Wok on tour. Hey guys, we're here for a super special episode, really unique episode of School of Wok on tour. I'm here with John from the Wasabi Company here in the UK. Welcome. Wasabi in the UK, I know. Well, thanks for having me, John. Yeah, um, oh, you're welcome. I have no idea about wasabi at all. Good. <laughs> you can come to the right place. Other than it coming out of tubes. Ah, uh, no, that's not wasabi. <laughs> so, but, but, so what, what made you start this? Yeah. Well, we're watercress growers, so we have a lot of the natural resources that wasabi enjoys in the, its native environment. Yep. So it grows native in the Japanese mountains alongside streams. I'm looking for the mountains. <laughs> no mountains <laughs> and no, no big trees either. That's why we have the shade nets. Okay, okay. So you have to kind of work, work the conditions in your way. Very much. Yeah. You have to adapt, you know. But the water's the most important thing. Okay. So once you've got the water, you need the flowing water. You need to uh, recreate that stream, yeah. you know, with all the dissolved um, nutrients and yeah. minerals, yeah. dissolved oxygen. Okay. Once you've got that, then then you can start to build the rest of it around it, which is just a gravel base to your bed and shade to protect it from the sun. Okay, and does the specific water or soil make a difference? The water very much, because it needs to be clean spring water. So okay. this comes from an aquifer 40 meters below ground. It's, it's, it's been through the, the granite and the limestone, it's purified. So when it comes back out, you've got water that's, that's clean enough for the wasabi, because it needs to be clean. And, and there's different tunnels doing different things? Different uh, stages of growth. Okay. So the wasabi okay. takes a long time to grow, takes 18 months, two years to grow, depending That's on the variety time. and exactly when we plant it, just the, the conditions throughout its life. So the, you'll see crops in different stages. So let's see some planting, okay, where awesome. it all starts. Awesome, so, so these guys are, the, they're the young ones? Yes, these, okay. are, these are about three months old. Okay. And ready, uh, ready to go out into the beds. Uh, they look so bright. Yeah. yeah. And, and like, how, like, how do you know if they're good? Well, the overall look of the plant, like you say, you want them to be green. You want yeah. them to have a sturdy stem on them, not too feeble, because they're gonna, they might encounter a bit of wind. Okay. And then you want them to be popping out of the tray, just so yeah. that you know the roots are held together. Okay. You can't see a lot of root coming out there. There's a little bit. Yeah. But as soon as that's planted in the gravel, it's gonna, it's gonna start shooting out the roots and go looking for the water that we have at the base of the bed. Yeah, I'm learning a lot here, because I'm definitely not green-fingered. Sure. <laughs> My wife does the growing, I right. do the cooking. Okay. <laughs> so after two or three months, yeah. they pop out, you pop them in and then they stay there until they're ready. They stay there. Okay. Uh, and obviously there's jobs to do while they're, while they're growing. Yep. Uh, you know, you've got to watch out for slugs and aphid. Uh-huh. Uh, once the plant's well established, like we were saying before, they don't present too much of a problem. The plant right. will grow through it. Yeah. Um, and in the summer, we'll put an extra layer of shade on. So right. even an English summer is too hot for wasabi. They'll be on those mountain streams where they grow in Japan. They'll have big cedar trees often alongside it. So the plant has developed, as we'll see, enormous heart-shaped leaves, right. which enable it to capture a lot of the sun or the light in the shade. If you suddenly turn on the lights, they, they bleach and they're, they're not happy at all. I see. So okay, this stays so on all winter, one layer, and we put another layer on in summer. Right, they're so, so they're super sensitive. Sensitive to the light. To the light. Uh, which is where the, these these tunnels are. Or what these tunnels are for? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the pebbles, mm. that's to help the sort of the filter the filtered water. You want the, the water to filter filter down through uh, underneath the bed. You also want any any rainfall, obviously, to percolate down down through the plant. Uh, and you've got an opportunity for the water to be mixing with oxygen right. when you've got the gravel stones, and then that allows the plant to take it up from the water. I see. And is that exactly the same way as watercress grows? It's very similar. Watercress you would more normally plant into this. Okay. Uh, okay. So into a base like this, so the watercress will grow in the actual flowing water. Right, in, but in gravel, in, in pebbles as well. Yeah. yeah exactly right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very similar. Smaller, slightly smaller gravel uh, on a, on a base just like this, and you'd sow the watercress seed in on top of this, and and it will grow from there. I'm learning a lot here. Yeah, yeah, taking a lot, lot in. to take in. I'm, yeah. quite, I'm, quite, I'm really looking forward to trying it, but this is, yeah. uh, this is amazing. I think it's interesting how a quintessentially English crop like watercress yeah. is actually has led us to, to wasabi. Yeah, well, it does. And also watercress in, in, is really prominent in a lot of Asian cuisines. That's true too. Yeah. Um, whether it's 
like cooked into yep. soups, stir fries, or even uh, even raw in, right. in some yep. of the Asian cultures. Not not so much raw in Chinese culture, but okay. Southeast Asia, for sure. Yeah. Yes. All right, so this is the next stage. Yes, this crop is uh, about four months older, uh, having been planted just at the end of last summer. They look quite similar to, um, like shape-wise, to nasturtiums. Yes, a little bit, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. They, but it's, it's, the, it's its own species, there's nothing else like it, right? No, no, it's very much its own thing. A lot of different cultivars within wasabi, so there's a lot of different varieties. Yeah. Um, many, many different ones are grown in Japan, and a lot of Japanese growers will, will have their own variety. So they will, what you can do is you can take a, you can propagate from the plant. So okay. when you harvest the wasabi, you can see a very small little plantlet that you can pull off and you can replant. And that way, if you keep doing that, you end up with a, with a variety that is, 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 is your own. And, and, and how close are these guys to, to harvesting? Yeah. These are a long way away. These are a year away. A little oh, bit right. Away. Still a year yeah, away. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's nothing there. When they get close to harvesting, the plant will be up here or yep. here. And you'll start to see the, the, the stem, what we call the rhizome. Yep. Even though it's not a rhizome, it's a stem okay. growing just above the ground here. Okay, so this will have a bit of root that kind of resembles what we know yeah, as wasabi yeah. root. It, it's difficult to see because yeah. the plant's so big. Yeah. So you often feel. But okay. you, you've after, you've, we're pulling as we go, we're doing yeah. like a harvest analysis. So, so we'll be pulling the beds once they're 14, 16 months old, expecting to harvest anywhere between 18 and 24 months. It's really cool. And you can hear the flowing water now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and, and you, so you, your family's been running farms for a while. We didn't start with our first, uh, we bought a watercress, our first watercress farm, our family, in the 90s. And you were brought in to do something crazy like this. <laughs> I came back, joined the family firm, do something different. We went through various different diversification projects and yeah, we stumbled upon wasabi or it was handed to us by, by the visiting chef. And, uh, and yeah, we've, it's grown from there. And mostly you sell to chefs or restaurants? That's, yes, yeah, yeah that's, our, that's our main market. We might sell to a third party who would take it on to chefs. Like in Europe, we might sell to a wholesaler and then he'll deliver it direct to the chefs. Um, but the market uh, from our website, direct to consumers, is growing all the time. Oh, really? Yeah, we're finding more and more people are understanding that fresh wasabi, although expensive, is so different to the imitation product that it's worth having. So how much you could, could you buy like one route for? Yeah. On, on your website. So 100 grams would be 20 pounds. Okay, it's not too bad. It's not too bad when yeah. you consider that you only need about five grams, maybe yeah. a bit more, 10 grams, say. So that's going to serve 10 people. But if you wanted to do like a special, like sort of family treat meal yeah. at home, you know, it's a, well, that's a pretty impressive thing to do. Exactly. Yeah. And if you're doing sushi or sashimi or a nice piece of beef, whatever, yeah. then, then you're already spending money on that. And wasabi takes you, just takes you a little bit further in the, uh, the theatre of it as well, the grating, as we'll see, you know. Yeah, a, yeah. Brings a lot of value to the meal. Well, I've got a little bit of fish and some prawns. Let's see what we can do with it. Excellent. <laughs> cool. So I've got this clearly very ad hoc setup here. Uh -huh. Rustic. <laughs> I've got some Japanese rice cooking. Yeah. Um, and we're going to make a quick like rice dish. Once, uh, whilst that's bubbling away, I've got some lovely uh, fish and seafood here. So some prawns and uh, a, a little bit of sushi grade salmon. I mean, the, so what, what do you usually cook? You know, you, do, do you always have it raw? Uh, yes, yeah, you'd want, you wouldn't cook the wasabi ever really because the, the cooking process will, process will destroy the flavor and the pungency. So you can put it on cooked food, no problem at all, but yeah. you would put it on at the end Okay. As, a, as a garnish, uh, or at least have it on the side because, because you don't want too much heat applied to it. Okay, and is there a specific sort of etiquette to like preparing wasabi that you've, yeah. kn you know of? Yeah, yeah. well, the, the, it's always done uh, at the sushi counter okay. if it's being served with sushi, yeah. or it's done at the table because you want to eat it fresh. Okay. As soon as you okay. start grating wasabi, you, you start a chemical reaction which only lasts for 15 minutes. Right. The flavour and pungency will only last for 15 minutes. Okay, 15 minutes, that's it? That, well, 15, 20 minutes. And after that, you, you, you sort of lose it all? You lose a lot of the flavour and, and the heat, yeah. Okay, so you're holding off? Well, I think so. We want to, we want to do this about <laughs> yeah, my rice three, is not minutes, yet. <laughs> three minutes before we're ready to eat, okay. then we, we grate the wasabi. Okay. So, all right, so in between that, I've got some rice hopefully coming up to boil in a second. I've washed that quite a few times because you know you, you want to get out the sort of starch from the rice grains and I've measured the water sort of how my mum taught me which is like halfway up the first line of my, 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 my finger 
um, on top of the rice. Right, right. Um, and then I'm just going to bring that to boil. Once it's boiling and the level of water hits the level of rice, you let it, you, you take it off the heat, yeah. let it steam in its own steam. In between that, it's pretty easy. I'm going to keep get you to cut, cut up. You, this is your stuff as well, isn't yes, it? Yes, this is yuzu. And you grow your own. Well, we grow, we sell yuzu trees. So we have yuzu trees. We're not in production in the business of producing yuzu because we just don't really have the temperatures, but we sell yuzu trees to grow at home and they're grafted onto a rootstock, which is hardly down to minus 15, so you can actually grow them in the UK. I'm not actually the massive fan of raw prawns, so yeah. I, I quite like to cook the prawns in the yuzu, yeah, so if you don't mind okay. slicing that in half and yeah. squeezing that in there, that'd be great. Um, and then meanwhile, I've got this lovely salmon that I'm just gonna uh, slice up, ready for our uh, finished rice dish. Right, I've got my little travel kit. Nice. <laughs> Very cute. It is cute, isn't it? That's what I thought. Here you go. Soy sauce, light nice. soy sauce, and a little, some sesame seeds, some mm -hmm. toasty sesame seeds. I think they'll, they'll, they'll go nicely. Yeah. But as I said, this is quite, let's, let's taste it. It's good and tart. Oh yeah. That's lovely that, isn't it? Yeah. I'm gonna put a bit of sugar in it, just to balance out that tartness, but I quite like it mm -hmm. sour. Yeah. Just dissolve that sugar and then we'll put the prawns. I'll put the prawns in now because I want them to kind of, as I say, like cook through, yeah. devein them. And then just before we sort of top the rice, we'll pop in a bit of light soy, some sesame seeds. Great. Really easy. Yeah, yeah. You know, simple. so the, 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 and then the seasoning of the rice, we'll just, I've got some of this Japanese um, uh, seaweed here. Yep. Uh, and we'll just break a bit of that up, or you can chop a bit up for me now. Yeah. Um, nice and finely sort of sliced. Uh, and we'll make like a, kind of like a, a togarashi mm -hmm. sort of seasoning for, for the top for of the rice. Style. So, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And so we'll have the rice, bit of that mixed together. And to be honest, I've got nice rice here, but you could use, you could just use like microwave rice if you're yeah, like yeah, camping yeah. nearby a wasabi farm. <laughs> As you do. <laughs> God, you do get a lot of pips in there. Yeah, you get so many. In a yuzu, yeah, don't you? Yeah. I just love it, having all these like completely natural and fresh Asian ingredients, but here in sunny England. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice, look at that. Oh, so what we gotta do, wait for your rice. And then we're ready. We're good. So my rice mm -hmm. Yum. has steamed nicely. I quite like it still warm, to be honest. So it's kind of like a bit more ho like a like a homely dish. And that rice is cooked lovely. Yeah. Like really nice and fluffy, but still a little bit sticky. Mm -hmm. And then dump your seaweed on top. Sure. You know. Nice. A little bit of chichimi or ichimi, and then my sesame seeds. I like the sort of pre-toasted ones because then it's yeah. just easy when you're out and about. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, your lovely mm. bits of salmon. And this is getting ready for your yeah. moment of truth, really, isn't it? Shall and we? the prawns. Yeah. You can, is this now the right time? I think so. If we're yeah. we're, we're close to eating, okay. so we start up at the the stem end. That's where the most recently grown wasabi is and where it will be uh, at its sweetest. Okay. Right under the stems, it might be a little bit watery. Yeah. And what they say is, is that the best bit of the wasabi is before it gets to the, towards the end, which is more bitter. Yeah. And but when you get past the watery bit at the top. Okay. But we'll okay. start right at the top and we'll see how we go. He's got some knife skills. <laughs> Good knife. So it's just a matter of grating in a circular motion on a special wasabi grater. There's no holes in the back. Okay. Because you want to be pasting it. So it's one of those moments where you kind of look like something so simple, but you look so professional doing it. <laughs> well, lots of practice. <laughs> Get the grater, that's it, that's okay, it. So Tilt it all like that. And just circular motion, see, expert already. I suddenly feel like I've been doing this for 14 years. And that's it, you're getting that sticky sort of texture there. Oh yeah, that's look at that, that. It's so, that is so different to the tube stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's almost like a, like the, a creamy avocado. Yeah, yeah, it's very creamy. So we're gonna mix all that together. 
What we've done, why we grazed it so finely is we're breaking down the cell walls. You have to break down the individual cells. Right. Because the enzyme resides in the cell wall and the glucosinolate we want it to react with is inside the cell. The gluco what, sorry? Glucosinolate. Okay. So when, that re when those two start to react together, yep. then they create a sulfur compound, an isothiocyanate, uh -huh. and that gives us our flavor, flavor and aroma and pungency, just. Oh, wow. So start now and, it, and then we can see how the flavor develops. Yeah, it's quite mild at this not point. Not much heat. Yeah. Not a little bit. And it's not sweet. But give it another two or three minutes. And, and then it starts to kick in. One of the byproducts of the chemical reaction is sucrose. And we'll get more sweetness. So normally we would just put a bit sort of on each one. Nice. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of soy to this prawn marinade. So we can get that yuzu soy yeah. sort of seasoning. Whoa, this is my favourite type of cooking, John. This is this is amazing. So I'm just gonna I won't I won't sort of overcover your wasabi. Yeah, wash it away. Look at that. It's gonna be good. What a learning experience. This is amazing. I'm gonna get some chopsticks so we can dig in. You dig in first, have a little taste, tell me what you think. How is that, yeah? Mm. Let me try it with a bit of rice Maybe as well. Some rice, yeah, yeah. Mm. Tasty, yeah? I need the rice. Mm. Yeah, yuzu is, juice. that is, powerful. the yuzu juice has really worked. Yeah. And actually, the wasabi's woken up now. Yeah, 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 it's a bit more powerful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you've got amazing local produce like this, you don't really need much to go with it. No, no. You know, you can get a little bit of fish here or there. If you didn't want to use fish, you could just have a quick, even like stir-fried seafood or something like that with a wasabi on top would work really yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, I hope you're enjoying the new series. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ding, hit that notification, notification bell. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs>